the iPad totally could never replace your laptop. Until iOS 11 came. So, right after the WWDC live stream, I went upstairs, shaved my head, got online, and found that everything Apple Pro had found a link to the iOS 11 beta. So I jumped the gun and got it. Um, special thanks to everything Apple Pro, because this video wouldn't be possible without him. Now, my iPad is the iPad Mini 2 hooked up to a Bluetooth keyboard. It's the lowest spectrum iPad they have that's still supported. So I'm asking you to bear with me because some of the things that were built for iOS 11 were specifically for the iPad Pro or newer. Um, but I'm going to give this review the best shot that I can give it. Beyond that, the unsupported Mac video is not happening this year. I can't do it. Um, my MacBook's toast. I tried it last night. It's just not going to happen. But I appreciate all the people that were waiting and watching. So if DOS Dude comes out with a definite patcher, then I'll link a video to his example because he always does a video too. And so might as well. I'm not looking to make a bunch of YouTube money. I'm looking to help people. So anyway, with all of that being said, let's take this to my portable office and let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I've already been playing around <laughs> with iOS 11. Um, and I've made it feel, I've made the new dock down here feel as much like my iPad as possible. And what I've done is I've added the file folder at the front, almost like Finder then Safari, then Firefox, then Notes, FaceTime, iMovie, YouTube, because these two kind of go hand in hand, Microsoft Word, uh, Apple Music, the App Store, and Settings. This over here tells you, it's almost like a prediction, like what you're going to use next. I don't really like that. I really wish they would just kind of get rid of it. But anyway, that's the new dock. Everything else kind of stayed the same. Let's talk features. Okay, so one of the newest features is this file browser. It's blowing everybody's mind. It's, it blew my mind, I'll be honest with you. Now, that's my iCloud drive as a whole. It's got my logo, it's got the music that I edit with, and it's got this document that I just copied from my PowerBook G4 to the iCloud drive using iCloud.com and if I click it it actually brings it up I don't know if I can edit it or not I can't right here but what I can do is drag it oh they haven't enabled that feature yet Oops. Well, I can click it. And click. Send it as a message. Add it to notes. Whatever I want to do. Now, it's not enabled yet. But I know for a fact, because I watched the keynote, that you're going to be able to download stuff and move it between computers using this file browser, which is amazing. Like, the new 500 gig iPad that they come out with, which is enough, that's that's enough storage to be considered a laptop. Um, <clears throat> let's say you needed to download a game and just send it to a different computer. You can do that now. You can actually do that. Let's talk the new drag and drop feature. Let's say I open up notes. I've got my list of stuff. But it needs a picture. 
what I would do is bring up my dock. I'm going to drag photos over here. Now, with newer Macs you can multitask, but with mine you can't. And I really like that selfie of myself. Now, you know what? I'm going to use the the photo that I took that's my wallpaper that everybody wants. I click it, I drag it, and I drop it. Or at least I thought I did. Oh wait, I click it, and then with the other hand, I close out photos. And now I can drop it into notes. Now that feature works a lot better on stuff like the iPad Pro where you're already multitasking. But if you're on an iPad Mini too, like I am, that's how you use that feature. Um, I think it's great. Personally, I can have a Word document open, open up Firefox, highlight a link, and drag and drop it into the Word document. That saves me a bunch of time trying to get the cut and paste feature to work. But personally, it's better with an iPad Pro. Okay, so let's talk App Store. <clears throat> they completely redesigned the App Store yesterday for both versions of iOS 11 one for your iPhone and the one for your iPad. And this is it. You've got a Today section. I can tell you, because I was playing with this yesterday, that the apps have changed, which is kind of neat. Um, you've got a dedicated games section, which is really nice, especially if you have a larger iPad. You can download full console games sometimes. For your iPad. Like they've got the GTA series on here. And Injustice 2. Which is if I'm not mistaken. An Xbox One game as well. Then you've got a dedicated app tab. Which is exactly what it says it is. You've got your top paid. Your top free. I really need to re-download GarageBand. You've got your update tab, which as you can see, mine were updated yesterday. And then your search function. It actually works a lot better than what they demoed at the keynote. I didn't think that this was a good idea until I started playing around with it. And when I started playing around with it, yeah, I think it's, I think it's actually pretty great. Let's talk multitasking. If I double tap the home button, it now brings up my taskbar with it. I can now, almost like 3D touch, hold things and turn them up or turn them down or etc. I can access my camera. I can do screen mirroring to my Apple TV. All of this stuff. And the multitask stuff is over here. This is everything I had open today. Everything. But if I slide up, it does the same thing. So I'm not sure where Apple's going with that. I think it could be just kind of like an iOS 11 bug. I think they will eventually make two different, I guess, dedicated things. Like if I double tap the home button, it's only going to show me apps. If I slide up, it'll show me my console like it would from beforehand. I'm not sure. Um... Oh, I forgot to talk about another thing. Speaking of 3D Touch, if I hold the file button, it shows me my most recent files. This iPad does not have 3D Touch on it, which is really cool that they've sort of programmed 3D Touch-like features into the app, so I think that's fantastic. So the last thing to test, obviously, is Siri. Now, I haven't done this yet, so I don't know what's going to happen. Show me movies with Johnny Depp in them. Here are some Johnny Depp movies. Are there any from 2017? I don't know if she got that. That looks like a bug. I'm not sure what you said there. 
Show me some Johnny Depp movies. Here are some Johnny Depp movies. Are there any playing now? I found seven movies playing today. Well, Pirates of the Caribbean's up at the top, so I'm assuming that works. Who's the drummer for Shinedown? Here's what I found on the web for who's the drummer for Shinedown. Yeah, it's still not perfect. At the demo, they had thousands of things that you could apparently say to Siri, but I'm assuming it's only going to get better. Anyway, there's the new Siri. It's got a little icon. It's kind of nice. Well, that about wraps it up for my iOS 11 review. Do I think you should get this right now? No. No, no. Unless you've got a device that you don't mind being a little buggy. You know. But I could see myself using this as a laptop now. It really makes me want either the 2017 iPad or the iPad Pro. Um, I don't know which one I want though because I can pay 400 bucks and have 128 gigs of storage on the 2017 iPad and I feel like the only thing I would be losing would be the ability to use the Apple Pencil. But if I go with the iPad Pro, it's probably going to last longer support wise. Let me know in the comments below what you would do. Um, Remember, I'm trying to get this to replace a laptop that already has 128 gigs of storage, so I'm not really losing much. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and make sure you click that bell for notifications. This is Adam. Take it easy.